Hi, in this Time Leaf tutorial, we're going to use a Spring Boot app and add a header, footer, and sections to our page using Time Leaf layouts. So this is part of a course on web development with Spring Boot using the Java programming language. This is the entire index of everything that we're learning right now. And if you follow along, you just might become a professional web developer after you learn this material. So let's talk for a moment about a typical page organization. When you look at a website, you're probably going to see things like a header, a nav bar, a main content, and probably a footer. This would look something like this side on the, on the HTML, where you actually use those names right in the HTML tags. And so you can build an entire static page like this, but what we're going to do is split up these sections into separate files so that they can dynamically be set when the program runs. Here's another way that you might organize a page. You might not just have the header and the content, you might have some other sections. And so it would still look very similar in your HTML. However, your CSS would probably make the arrangements so that these uh, sections are side by side. Now, here's what we're going to work on today. We're going to take this side here, which is the pretty simple framework, and then we're going to put in some time leaf tags. So you can see that we're going to create a separate file for the header, a separate file for the footer, and then we're going to name these things with a fragment name. We're also going to have a main layout, kind of the default layout, which is going to stitch these together. So you can see that the uh, header has a section that says TH fragment header. And then you can also see in the, in the main default layout that there is this replacement command. So it's going to dynamically substitute one piece in for another. And so that's what this tutorial is about, is how to configure the application and set up your files so that your, uh, your project is more modular. Now the footer is going to work the same way. You can see that we have a fragment called footer, and then the default template is looking for that footer piece to be replaced into it. Now what about the section in the middle called content? So let's consider the login form that we created in a previous tutorial. This is going to show a form. Now we're going to add this item here called decorate. And it says, I'm going to be using the default template page to display this layout form. And so this line here is an important line to say we're using uh, the uh, header, footer, main section template. And so we're going to label a piece on this page as part of the, uh, the content. And so the content then is going to dynamically be replaced in the center here. Now let's compare what we, what we have right now to what we're going to make. So this is the current login form. You can see it looks pretty. It's using some bootstrap styling, but there's no nav bar across the top. And so each page is kind of lost. You know, there's no navigation. There's no footer either. So by the time we're finished with this tutorial, we're going to have what you see in front of you now. So you can see there's a beautiful uh, nav bar at the top and we have a footer and then the login is going to be shown here. So let's try a practice login here. I'm going to put in some username and let's go with a password. It doesn't really matter what they are. And when I choose the login button, you can see the results now show both the header and the footer are included on the page. So this is the look we're going for by the time of the end of the tutorial. So let's switch back into our application we were working on in the previous tutorial. This was the login form that we created earlier. So you can see in the project we have a login model, we have a login controller, and let's take a peek inside there to see that we have a, a mapping for the slash and then process login. Then the two items that are able to be seen are the login form itself, and then we had the uh, process the login results. So these are the starting point, and if you haven't seen these, then go back to the previous tutorial and you'll, you can catch up. So we're going to take this project and modify it to use templates. So I'm going to close anything that's open, and then I'm going to copy the project. So let's go to the project name, and let's see, might as well collapse it. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose copy. And then right away, I'm going to press control V, and it's going to offer a new name for it. It says, if you want to call this thing your next project, how about 2-3? Sounds like a good name to me. So let's go ahead and choose copy. Now we have project 2-3 and we should be able to run it. 
However, there's a few things that we need to modify to make this happen. So let's go look inside of the main project folder and look at topic 2.2. So this is not a good name for our application since we are now at 2.3. So I'm going to right click and then choose refactor and rename. And let's just change that 2 out for 3. And then it's going to offer to rename the class itself. And that's OK. So now you can see that the uh, topic 2.3 application is the new class name. Also, let's go check the palm file. I think there's something that we need to change in there as well. And so sure enough, we have something called an artifact name. And let's go and change that to a 2-3. Also look up above at the artifact ID and we'll rename that as 2.3 as well. Okay, so we're gonna need this thing open anyway, so let's leave it on the screen. So the first thing I need to do is to add a dependency if I'm going to use these templates. So let's search on the MVN repository form for our templates. So what I'm looking for is something with time leaf layout. And sure enough, the first thing that comes up is the layout dialect. Let's go ahead and move to the most recent version. Make sure we have Maven selected. And I'm going to click inside of the code and it tells me it's been copied. So let's return into the palm file and go ahead and paste the dependency in and fix any indenting issues. Okay, so you can see that the dependency has now been imported. Looks like it comes from New Zealand and we're looking for time leaf layout dialect. So we're going to be able to modify our HTML code using layouts. Now I think I'm done here, so I'll close the palm file. All of the work that we're going to do now is in the resources folder and in the templates folder. So we have two items right now. We have a login form and we have a login results. Both of these will be modified slightly, but the major changes are that we're going to add a header and a footer and a default template to our folders. So the first thing I need to do is add a new folder. So let's go to the templates area and choose add a new folder. I'm going to name the folder as layouts. I'm going to add a new file to this folder. So right click, choose add file, and let's call this thing commonheader.html. So make sure that you got capitalization important here. It can be capitalized or not. You can see that I'm using kind of a camel case. I'm also going to create a common footer. And so we'll just do the same process. We'll right click, Add it to the folder and choose commonfooter.html for the file name. Now the third item I'm going to add is called the default layout. So go ahead and right click, choose add file, call it defaultlayout.html, and we've got all three items now that are ready to be assembled into a single page if we dynamically combine them. Now let's start with a header since this is the top of the page. So I'm going to add a single div for this item. Notice I'm not including any HTML or doc type or anything because this is really a document fragment. And so what I need to do is tell this div that it is a special div. Everything contained in here belongs to a fragment. So th colon fragment is the key word that I'm looking for. So you can use header or you can use any terminology that you want, but I'm going to keep it simple. Header is the name I'm choosing. A good place to find a nav bar, of course, is with Bootstrap. So we've already got Bootstrap installed in our CSS. So I'm going to go get a nav bar from their copy and paste section. So I think we go down into a layout, maybe? Uh, nope, it's try content. What do we have here? Not there either. How about components? So I'm looking for nav bar. Look at there, nav bar. Perfect. Okay, so now when I find an example of a nav bar, I'm going to copy and paste it. So let's uh, just copy this to the clipboard. And so now we have all of this code that's in front of us ready to go into our app. So I'm switching back and where it's got this uh, div, I'm going to put the nav bar inside of it. So we're going to maybe change a few things, but not much. So I'm just going to change a couple of items here. I'm going to change it from a light, light theme to a dark theme. It's easier for me to recognize where the boundaries are. And then instead of the title being nav bar, let's call it awesome app. Name it whatever you want. Now let's go and add something to the common footer. So same process here. So we're gonna put a div in here and then we're gonna say th fragment and then we're going to give it a name. So I'm gonna call mine footer. Now, what do you wanna put in your footer? It's up to you again. So at the footer page, I'm just going to put in something like a paragraph and I'll say contact us and put a phone number and then maybe a copyright notice. 
This is where you might throw in some links to other parts of the page. It's kind of whatever you want for the final thing that the user sees as they're scrolling to the end of your page. Now a really easy way to format this with color is to add some bootstrap class names. So I'm going to make this an alert. And the color is alert primary. Now if you know about bootstrap, you can make it as secondary or danger or other items or caution, I think it's called. And so I think primary is blue. So you don't have to put in these class names, but this will make it obvious again by changing the colors of the backgrounds. All right, so now we've got the top and the bottom. Now how about this default template? What are we gonna do there? So the default template needs to have standard HTML code. So I've already got some from the login form. I'm just going to copy the top few lines, which includes the header and the head section, and then we're going to paste it into the form here, just as it was. We've also got a reference here, as you can see, to Bootstrap. Now I'm gonna to have to add the body and then the uh, HTML close tag to make everything balance out. And so I have kind of a skeleton of a standard page now. So the default uh, layout is the uh, thing that is going to be rendered to the browser with components inserted into it. So let's put some comments in to know what is going to be part of this default layout. I want to insert the header. I also want to insert the footer. And then I'm going to leave a section called content and that will be inserted dynamically through the other items in my project, such as a login form or the login results. So this is the three parts of my layout. So to put in a placeholder, we need to create a div. Inside of the div tag in the opening section, we're going to put another time leaf uh, marker. So th colon replace. So we're gonna replace whatever content is in this div with something else. We're going to get it from another file. So the file that we're looking for is in the layouts folder and it's called the common header. So we don't use the HTML extension, but we do have to match the file name. So the label that we're putting in here is anything that has a section labeled as a fragment called header. So this word header is important. So I have labeled it header here. And if I look into the common header, you can see that we had a fragment named at the very top. So this name header matches the item in the default layout called header. If they don't match, they won't work together. Now, see if you can replace the bottom part. What are we gonna set up the, the footer to be? Well, take a guess. If you wanna see how I do it, watch this. I'm just gonna copy and paste the header and then I'm going to rename it. So it's common footer. And then the label of the section that I'm looking for on that HTML page is going to have to have a fragment named footer. Now for the interior section, I'm literally going to call it a section. We're going to give this another time leaf uh, label. So it's called layout colon fragment equals content. Now uh, for the text that I'm gonna have for the default, I'm going to put in some instructions. It says, replace this with a page that has a layout fragment equals content. It has to have that somewhere in the page and then it will automatically be inserted into here. So let's go check out the login form and see what it has currently. So you can see that it does have its own header and things. So I'm going to delete most of this. I'm going to get rid of all of the uh, head in there because uh, that's been taken care of already. And now I'm going to add two things here. First of all, I need to indicate a place that this is going to replace the content. So the div, which is the container, is a logical place for me to indicate here is the content that's going to be put into the default layout. So let's say layout colon fragment equals content. So that means that anything from this div opening to the close will then be put into the default layout at this point right here. So it's going to substitute this section with the login form. Now to make this work, we have to put something at the very top of the page to indicate that this is supposed to work with a template or with a layout. So we're going to put in layout colon decorate equals and then point to the master of the uh, layouts. So it's going to be layouts slash default layout. So that is pointing to this file here called default, default layout. Now we've got the uh, par parts that we need, I believe. We've got the content, uh, if you spell it right. How does that, uh, content, <laughs> good thing I saw that. And then we've got the, uh, the indication at the, at the top. 
All right, so we've got all the pieces put together here. Let's see if this works. All right, I got the app up and running. Let's go ahead and switch back to our browser. So let's go from our Google page to our uh, localhost 8080. Of course, there's no page there, so we have an error, but let's type in login and with a trailing slash. And what do you see now? You can see that we have the, the nav bar across the top, and then we have the login page. So let's see what happens if I try to log in with a password. And uh, let's go ahead and choose the login. And we got the results. But what happened? How come this one doesn't show the nav bar and the footer? Well, we, can have to, we have to make some changes to the results page as well. So to make changes to the results page, we're going to need this line right here, just like we had in the uh, login form. So we're going to copy that, open up login results, and replace the HTML with this item. And uh, we don't need the rest of this. We don't need a header anymore. We can just leave it as body. However, where are we going to put the fragment that says that this is content? We're going to put it right here in this first div. So you could put it in the body, but I think div here is a good spot. Since I don't type very well, I'm going to go to the login form and I'm just simply going to steal the code that I typed in earlier. So this is the layout fragment. Let's copy that and let's go back to the results and put the fragment name in there. So now the layout fragment content shows up. So I'm saving it. Let's go back and try to log in again. So I go to the form, type in a whole bunch of stuff and choose login. And this time you can see that we have both the nav bar and the footer showing up. Now, how come my drop down menu doesn't work? What is the deal? I thought that everything was done. One small thing that we need to do. So that behavior is JavaScript. Let's go to the default layout and we can see that we have a link to CSS for Bootstrap. However, there is one other folder that we're missing and there's a JavaScript folder. You can see that Bootstrap Bundle JS is part of the, uh, of the Bootstrap experience. So let's put this at the bottom of the page. So probably down after the footer. So we need to put in a link, so a script tag. And then the uh, item inside of there is to tell it what source that we're getting our JavaScript from. So this source is in the JS folder. I'm going to take the bootstrap.bundle.js file and then that will automatically load after everything else is loaded. So let's come back into our app and I'm going to go back to the login form. So now I'm expecting that the download uh, dropdown works. Doesn't seem to. Uh, let's check something. I'm going to go to the inspection on the page and go back to network and reload the page and see if there's anything that's suspicious that comes up. And so we can see that bootstrap bundle, it gets a 404. It didn't load. So I must have typed it wrong. Let's go back and check it. So when I look at my code here, I can see that I was missing the previous uh, leading slash. I just put in the regular JS. So let's put that in, save the results, and come back here and refresh the page and see if that helps anything. So it's going to reload, and I'm going to watch my network, and it's going to say all the pieces have loaded properly. I got a 200. And so you can also see how long it takes for you to load some of this stuff. So this is sometimes a criticism of Bootstrap is that it has to load a bunch of junk before your page loads and it might slow your users down. So it's pretty, but it comes at a cost. Let's see what happens when I click drop down. Aha, there it is. Now I have action. We have JavaScript running on our page. So if you're interested in becoming a professional software developer and using Spring Boot, then stick with me. This is a whole course on developing apps with Java Spring. And this is the index, so look at what you have to come. Make sure you subscribe and follow on so that way you don't miss a class. See you soon.